Hello everybody, how's it going? It's Nerdgasm, and I'm finally back with another video, a comic book review. This one is a long time coming, and I apologize that it has taken me this long to release it, but my review of Daredevil Guardian Devil that was supposed to be out at the end of November had to be pushed back until early December, and then you had Christmas and New Year's, and I was busy at work, my hours were inconsistent over the holidays, it was kind of messy. I hope you can all find the kindness in your hearts to forgive me. I'm only human, and YouTube is just a hobby for me. I don't earn enough making these videos. It doesn't pay the bills. I don't have enough resources to pursue this YouTube project on a full-time basis. But anyways, staying on the topic of only being human, you know who didn't accept the fact that he was one? Dr. Kurt Connors. This guy lost his arm in a wartime injury and wanted to create a serum using reptilian DNA to help people like him regenerate their lost limbs, surpass the limited healing capabilities of the human body. It was an admirable cause and motivation, but unfortunately flawed in its execution. The experiment went sideways, like really sideways. The man turned into a giant lizard creature that seems to be growing stronger and stronger with each new transformation. Over time, Connors has lost more and more of his humanity, and his lizard side of his personality has slowly begun to take over. Today, I wanted to review an interesting lizard story arc released in 2010, known simply as Shed. It was part of the larger, overarching storyline known as the Gauntlet that ran between November of 2009 and July of the following year. Despite being the smaller piece of a bigger puzzle, Shed is a pretty self-contained story, so you don't have to worry too much about missing any important story beats from the other issues or anything. You won't be that confused if you go into it cold turkey. Essentially, the Gauntlet was a storyline that featured Spider-Man going up against several of his villains in succession, with the hero being worn down to his physical and mental limits. Shed was simply the lizard's turn at bat, and that's really all you need to know going in. We start our story with Spider-Man and Black Cat teaming up to stop a group of mobsters late one night. After incapacitating them, they flirt back and forth with one another. Spider-Man believes their relationship is getting serious, but Black Cat pumps the brakes, telling him this is just for fun, and that if something better comes along, he should take it, and not let what they have get in the way of it, which stings Peter a little. With some encouragement from Harry, Peter decides to pursue Curly Cooper of the NYPD, who he has been attracted to for quite some time. He decides to pick her up some lunch and brings it to her at the station. Curly makes it clear to Peter that they are not on a date, but once he explains that he will probably tell everyone it is, she gives into that notion a little. Some time later, Peter arranges for an actual date, one at the Blue Hills restaurant in Greenwich Village. He finds himself being stood up by Curly, believing it's her way of getting him back for all the times he blew her off. But in actuality, there has been an accident at Felcorp Pharmaceutical regarding Dr. Kurt Connors. Connors had recently started a new job there at the labs, hoping to repair the damage to his life his alter ego, the Lizard, had caused. Now a widower, his son Billy has been in foster care and hates his guts, believing his father is a monster and nothing more. The only way Connors can see his son is with strict supervision, and no matter what he does, he cannot get through to him. Billy wants nothing to do with his dad. At work, Connors is a ticking time bomb of emotions. His boss, Brian King, is constantly chastising him and begins flirting with Connors' assistant, Marissa, whom Connors has strong feelings for. This makes Connors jealous, especially after he learns that the two had slept together. Despite believing he had been cured, Connors' lizard personality resurfaces once again and begins to grow stronger within him. As Kurt battles for dominance within himself, his boss enters his office to berate him once more. 
Connors tries to take his lizard suppressant before it's too late, but King stops him, believing it's the serum that causes the transformation. And well, you know what happens next. Kurt Connors transforms into the lizard and decides to chomp down on his delicious boss. Yummy. Spider-Man meets with Curly at Felcorp Industries, learning that six people had died in the attacks, the only survivor being Connors' assistant, Marissa. Spider-Man believes that the lizard is going after Billy, and heads for his foster home first. When Spider-Man gets there, it isn't long before he comes face to face with the lizard. He tries desperately to reach his old friend, Kurt Connors, deep inside of the monster, but to no avail. And when the door of Billy's foster home is broken open during their scuffle, he believes that the lizard had already been inside. Spider-Man manages to calm the lizard, as Connors is able to get a handle of his darker personality, if only for a short while. As the lizard retreats, Spider-Man puts a spider tracer on him, so he can hunt down his foe at a later time. Right now, his focus is on the family, which are in pretty rough shape. Billy's foster mom is bleeding out in Spider-Man's arms, and it's revealed that Anna Cravenoff, Craven the Hunter's daughter, has taken Billy. She ties him up in a nearby alleyway and offers him up as food to the lizard. Despite Billy's desperate attempts to reach his father and Kurt Connors trying to overpower his darker half, it's no use, and the lizard has himself a helping of Billy Jerky. Billy steak, Billy back ribs, I don't know how I can make this any less horrifying. He eats a child, his own child, and they say Marvel can't be dark. Sure. Anyways, after the lizard eats Connor's son, Spider-Man not only finds the remains of Billy, but after following his spider tracer, also finds the remains of the lizard, believing he is dead in a pile of garbage. However, a new, more powerful form of the monster claws its way out of the skin and claims that it has shed Kurt Connors. It violently attacks Spider-Man and exhibits the ability to talk fluent English, having taken over the mammalian brain of Connors' body. This new lizard also has the ability to telepathically communicate with the lizard part, or more animalistic and instinctual part, of the human mind, which triggers the fight-or-flight response. The lizard connects with Spider-Man's, which sends him running in fear, and then activates it in the minds of several New Yorkers, who go berserk and attack each other. Spidey manages to make it back to the crime scene at Felcorp and finds a batch of Connors' lizard suppressant. He takes it with him in the hopes of using it against the lizard, and even down some of it himself to counteract the effects of the lizard's telepathy. Spider-Man uses the serum on the lizard, but it seems to have no effect on him. He then shows the monstrosity a picture of Billy Connors and tries once again to reach the good doctor. As the lizard dwells on his thoughts, Spider-Man is attacked by the angry mob of people the lizard had influenced. In the surprising turn of events, the lizard actually saves Spider-Man and pulls him to safety. Having taken over the brain of Kurt Connors, the lizard is beginning to feel mammalian emotions for the first time, such as sadness, regret, and even shame. It sees the world the way it had never seen it before, coming to the realization that there is more to life than just killing and survival, more to it than just instinct. The lizard lets Spider-Man go and releases his influence on the people of New York. Why? For one simple reason. Spider-Man Shed is a great lizard story. I'd rank it up there as being one of the best featuring the villain. Writer Zeb Wells does such an amazing job showing you the tragic elements of this character and the inner turmoil that goes on within the body of Kurt Connors as he fights back his lizard persona. The Lizard has always been one of those fascinating man-into-monster type stories in comics. In Shed, Kurt Connors is a broken man, trying to piece together his life and repair the damage his reptilian alter ego has caused over the years. 
years. He's dealing with the poor reputation he has within the scientific community. His wife had died from cancer, and he lost the custody of his son, a son who hates him with every ounce of his being, might I add. This man has been through a lot, and it's only a matter of time before he snaps and becomes the lizard once again. I think Shed is easily one of the more darker and frightening depictions of the lizard we have had in comics, not only through the gruesome artwork of Chris Bocello, but also through the events of the story itself, when he's seen eating people, his boss, even his own son. It's really morbid. When the lizard transforms into his new form, it feels out of left field at first, a bit odd, especially when the comic brings in telepathic powers and everything, but I think it works within the confines of this story. Much like the lizard shedding his human half, Kurt Connors, he wants to make it so that the rest of the world sheds their monkey brains as well, as he puts it. He wants humanity to become instinctual, reptilian, and in his eyes stronger than they could have ever been before. These concepts were most definitely the inspiration for the lizard's plot in 2012's The Amazing Spider-Man, without question. So yeah, Spider-Man Shed, it's a solid story, and it's a quick and easy read, only four issues long. It's part of that larger storyline, The Gauntlet, but it's pretty self-contained and standalone, so you don't really need to worry about all the continuity and stuff. I want to thank you all for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it, and if so, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to my channel if you'd be so kind. If you'd like to take part in the monthly polls that determine which comics and even video games I look at in the future, you can also become a financial backer over on Patreon.com. I will see you all in the next one. Take care and stay nerdy.